I want to also talk to you about the role of women in, in leadership, particularly in the business world, financial community, but more broadly. It's something that you were very involved with as the first lady was, as uh, Valerie Jarrett was, for that matter. Right. Uh, and as we look around the United States, there's still a substantial difference. If you just look at the results, the numbers, it's true in the C-suite, it's true overall in terms of wages across the board. It's also true in law firms. You're not a law firm. We put up a, 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 a chart here that shows some statistics, which is fascinating. It's basically 50-50 men and women as associates. Non-equity partners, which are partners but not quite fully, it's 28-72. Look at full partners, it's 18% to 82% in this day and age, and also the partner earnings, there's a big difference. What's happened? I don't understand this. If you go to law schools, it's often more than 50% of the people in law schools are women. Why hasn't that changed, Tina? Well, it's like so many industries. As women advance through their careers, I think we found there's structural barriers to women continuing. Things like not having flexible scheduling, having to balance childcare needs. We lose a lot of women when they leave to have their children. Um, we are the only industrialized country in the world without a national paid leave policy. So this is not just an issue for individual industries like the legal business or companies. It's a national competitiveness issue. It's actually one of the reasons I went to Buckley Sandler. Um, they have had a tremendous record of promoting women. So a third of their women, they are a third of their partners are women. Um, they've had 100% of the women who've taken family leave come back to stay in the practice. They've had 100% of the men who have kids <laughs> take paternity leave. But it's important because that sets the culture. It's not just a women's issue, it's a family issue. They're a firm that supports it. More businesses need to do that. That's gonna be the key. Well, well, does the government have to get involved, in particular the federal government, or should competition take care of this problem? If, as people compete for the best and the brightest, the most talented people, shouldn't that take care of the problem? Well, the problem is it's not gonna work for everybody. And setting a national policy really sets the tone, lifts the floor, and then competition can keep happening above the floor. But right now, we don't even have a floor. So what's the most important thing that could be done? Um, I think a national paid leave policy is mm -hmm. critical because that's one of the junctures where people, we're losing people at their most talented. You train somebody for six or seven years, then they're trying to find, have difficulty balancing home you know, and work, and we need to address that. We also need to address equal pay. You know, you can see it also in the law business. There's a, and you saw it on the chart. Right. There's disparity even at the highest ranks. Um, and we know how to do that. We need pay transparency. Um, we need to measure what measures gets addressed. So we need to address those issues. Something the Trump administration just rolled back was one of our requirements that yeah. companies report on their pay data. I noticed that actually.